Well, we're so glad that you're here. My next author has an amazing book. It's called Revelation Questions Answered, Promised Before the World Began. I think all of us have some questions about the book of Revelation. What does all that stuff mean and how does it pertain to us today? My author is Larry Heidelberg. Larry, we're glad you're here. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Larry, let's talk about the main message of your book. Well, what I'm... Uh... My main message is people need to get saved now because if they're not going to like it in the next, if we have, when the rapture takes place, the saved will go out, those that are no Christ as Savior, and then the, re, re, the tribulation starts, and those that have heard this side of the rapture won't have a chance to get saved that time. But those that haven't heard will be able to. So what is the message of being heard and making the difference of being the ones that go to heaven? Just briefly. Uh, well, the, the person has to come to know Jesus Christ as Savior by repenting, realizing they can't make heaven their home, and asking God to save them, wash them in his blood, and make them ready for heaven. Hmm. So my question is, as we look at Revelation, is evil going to be done away with? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. The Lord has put up with uh, so much uh, evil done to his world. And he had a plan. He has, he always has a plan. And he, he's, he will take care of evil. There will be no evil at the end of the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. It's a confusing book. Um, it but is. I guess... The, the message is the payday is coming, right? Yes, it is. And he God's not an author of confusion, but he didn't want to just tell everybody what's going on. He wants people to search his word. He says that in other books of the Bible, study to show yourself approved. Hmm. This is going to be a an interesting question. Is there more than one God? There's only one. There can only be one. Who has the power to to create, as you can see out in the world. And there's only one God that can do that. That same God had knew that he was going to have to go to earth in a fleshly form and die on the cross, pay our sin debt, because he knows all things. Hmm. Larry, if there's somebody that's watching this or hearing this interview, and they say, look, I am a believer, I am a Christ follower, but it kills me that my spouse is not, or my children are not. What message, if they buy this book and they give it to that person, what are they going to receive? What kind of message? They're go Hopefully, they're going to see the pattern that God has established all through the Bible, that he's going to end evil, number one. He has already paid for sin, and he won't take any mocking. And so once they see that they're sinners, and the book, there's a strong... Uh, salvation message in my book uh and if they'll just take that to heart because it's not me it's god's word right when you talk about mocking what does mocking look like today oh today it's very similar to that of the old testament we do our own thing we put god in in a well you'll i'll get back to you later mm. and god says no I'm here now and you're here now, but I can take you out. He doesn't like that. He doesn't like being put on the back burner to anything, money, relationships, health. You know. Exactly right. Do you, do you feel like um, the times that you've heard God the most are when you were in hard times or in when you were on the top of the mountain? Oh, both. Yeah. Because. In the hard times, you're drawn to the end of you. In the good times, you get to see him more clearly. I've never heard it put that way. That's absolutely beautiful. So this struck up some emotion. Is that, uh, is that emotion of gratefulness that he let you go through those difficult times? Yes, it, <clears throat> it brings you to the end of you. And you get more serious with God. Yeah. And you think that you're doing great, that you're 
you know, you're accomplishing something for God, but you're not, you know, it, and then whenever you finally give up yourself and get away from self and, and then ask God, just Lord, what do you want me to do? Hmm. I'll do what you want me to do. Will you talk about God as being a God of love and not anger and punishment on earth? And, you know, just share your thoughts about that, that we feel like sometimes we're going through hard times. We're being punished. Right. Hmm. But God does not waste life. Now, he, if a person absolutely will not turn toward him and they will absolutely do evil, then he can take them out because he's God. But all the Ten Commandments is not a Ten Commandments of don'ts. It says, I encourage you to follow these because your life will be good. All the Bible is that of how to, to enjoy the life that God gave us. And we can... We can throw it away by getting wrapped up in self. But if we just walk hand in hand with him through the day, it's a good day. Larry, let's talk about the rewards in heaven that God promises us. Well, God, he never he never misses our work for him. He Just as he walked daily, or he, he had a certain time in the garden with Adam and Eve, he wanted to be with them. And especially in the New Testament, in the Old Testament also, but in the New Testament, he wants to be with us. He sees all about our day, what what we did for him. He misses nothing whatsoever. Hmm. He, uh, he will have certain rewards. He'll have certain crowns that he'll give us as showing our reward. It doesn't make us special in the, in the group of the people. It just shows my love for God, your love for God. And it's a very personal thing. So did you say like missionaries have a special crown? and Yes, they do. Teachers. Pastors and mm -hmm. old winners have a special crown. There's five different crowns. And, you know, I don't I guess they stack up on your head somehow. I, I guess know. so. Yeah. yeah. I'd be happy just to have one, let alone have them stacked, right? Yes. So the, the one thing that I think people are looking forward to is the peace that comes in heaven. I'd love for you to share about that because there's a lot of noise and a lot of confusion, a lot of lies um, that Satan is just pouring into us. But in heaven, there's going to be peace and calm and truth. It's true. Now, during the tribulation period, we'll get to see some and we'll get to realize what they're going through. But uh, in heaven itself, there is just peace. There's adoration of the Lord, of course. There's enjoyment of each other. Uh, there's certain sections in there where uh, it's so much to get into in that, but it's part of the rewards. The white garments that we get to wear, we never get sold. And we have a, uh, there's a tree of life and that tree of life will have different fruits on it and we'll be able to eat those fruits and enjoy that. The beauty is going to be a, a, a sounding it says, uh, by way of Paul, it says, I have not seen nor ear heard what the Lord has prepared for his for his saved. And you get to looking around here and see all the birds and the butterflies and the fish and everything else. And you, you can kind of think, hey, you see all this beauty and all the magnificence of such a vast creation. Can you think of what maybe heaven is going to be like for us? Mm -hmm. It's hard to think that much. It is. Now we know that the reason that there's sin is because of Lucifer and fallen angels. How are they going to be dealt with? Oh, whenever he starts all that and he, when he comes down to the battle of Armageddon, he is going to take all the angels and, and cast them into the lake of fire. Now it doesn't say that, but that's the logical end of what, what happening. But the Lucifer is going to be chained up for a thousand years released at that end of a thousand years, and he's going to be able to deceive the nations if the nations don't want to accept God. God, mankind has tried it their way by sinning. God gave them no Lucifer in the first part of, of uh, the book of Revelation. Then he brings him out in the eighth chapter out of the ninth chapter out of the bottomless pit. And so Mankind thinks, oh, we can do this on our own. Mm -hmm. We can't do this on our own. We can't. 
Larry, I am sorry to have to wrap this up already, but where is your book available besides Amazon? Yeah, my own website, which is www.authorlarryheidelberg.com. Uh, Barnes and Nobles. Uh, Where all the get, books are sold. Yeah. Yeah. Larry, thank you so much for joining us again. I really appreciate it. Revelation questions answered, promised before the world began. Larry Heidelberg, have a great day. Thank you. You too.